Hello and welcome to the final lecture for Chapter 7 on Ethnicity, really going into depth on what is ethnic cleansing. Now in Lecture 7.3 and earlier in this section, we've talked about both the differences in ethnicity, how that can lead to conflict. Ethnic cleansing is unfortunately a very difficult topic for us to try and discuss, but we need to go over several examples that have happened historically to this point especially because most conflicts, especially in the 20th century, have been ethnically focused. Ethnic cleansing itself, the definition, is a process in which a more powerful ethnic group forcibly removes a less powerful group from their territory. Now, the term forcibly removes is gentle in many of these cases. Uh, it should be noted that the purpose in this case is not to subjugate a group but to remove them completely and to create a homogeneous region. If you do remember earlier, we talked about the definition of a nation state being one with a homogeneous population. These are cases where one group has attempted to create a completely homogeneous region within a country. In essence, to eliminate an ethnicity in total, not just a part. Most of the ethnic cleansing we see today happens in Europe and Africa. It's been most prominent in the Balkans, the former Yugoslavian republics, and in Rwanda, and potentially in Darfur. Of course, historically, we need to talk about the worst case of ethnic cleansing historically, which was the forced migration uh, out of Germany in most of Europe between 1939 and 1945, better known as the Holocaust. Um, we won't go into detail in the, at this time because the examples that we need to be aware of uh, for this course need to be more modern. However, it should be an example that most of our students remember as we're discussing ethnic cleansing is that we start from the Holocaust, Holocaust add Yugoslavia and Rwanda. Uh, realistically speaking, let's first start by talking about Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia itself was controlled by both Austria-Hungary and the Ottoman Empire prior to World War I. In fact, if you take a look at the maps, Austria-Hungary uh, controlled the northern portion, the western portions, the Ottoman Empire to the south and the east. Okay. Today, as you can see, the overlap of both states and also ethnicities, Bosnia-Herzegovina especially, Croatia and Serbia as well. Uh, We'll talk about each of these groups as we go through this section. There's a uh, phrase about Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia has seven neighbors, six republics, five nationalities, four languages, three religions, two alphabets, and one dinar. The level of diversity in Yugoslavia is so extreme, and because Yugoslavia is so diverse, it opens the door to more potentially damaging conflict. What's really led to the destruction of the multi-ethnic Yugoslavia that existed throughout most, most of the Cold War was rivalries that began amongst the ethnicities. As soon as Yugoslavia broke up, you started to see conflict erupting between all the groups over where the boundaries should lie. One of the most difficult areas to try and settle down was, both, was the area of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Bosnian Muslims were a majority in this region, but they considered themselves more of a nationality or more of an ethnicity rather than a nationality. In this area, you had about half Muslim, 40% Serb, and about 14% Croat. So you have a great diversity in this region with no majority. The Serbs and the Croats attempted to initiate ethnic cleansing of the Muslims to try and create a homogeneous society because those two groups were the groups in power at the time. As an outcome of the ethnic cleansing in Bosnia, there was a set of peace accords set in 1996 that divided the country into three regions. Serbs would gain half, Muslims one quarter, and the Croats one quarter. One of these areas was also known as Kosovo. Kosovo is 90% Albanian and 10% Serb. However, the Serbs were in control of the government and the military. As a result, with the help and assistance of other areas, the Serbs began an ethnic cleansing throughout the breakup of Yugoslavia. 
by 1999, about three quarters of a million Albanians became refugees when they had to migrate to Albania. As a result of this, NATO intervened in 1998 and 1999 and forced the withdrawal of Serbia from Kosovo. This entire region has spawned a name. That name is Balkanization, which is a key term for this chapter for us. Balkanization is when a state breaks down through ethnic conflict. It is named for this very particular conflict, in fact. So when we're taking a look at a state breaking down through ethnic conflict, it's referred to as Balkanization. Now, the ethnic cleansing in Central Africa also needs to be discussed, and specifically in Rwanda. As we're going to discuss in Chapter 8 and Unit 4, the boundaries in Africa do not correspond to the ethnic groups in the region. As a result, when those boundaries were drawn by the European powers at the Conference of Berlin in the early 1900s, it created countries with two ethnic groups that were rivals pitted against one another. One of these was in Rwanda, where a conflict between the Hutus and the Tutsis destabilized the region altogether. These differences are going to be reinforced through German and Belgian colonization of the region. But like I said, we'll discuss this much more in depth in Chapter 8. This will lead to both ethnic cleansing and genocide, when an out-and-out -out Hutu rebellion tries to overrun and completely destroy the Tutsi population. The refugees from this conflict will spill into neighboring countries and inspire additional conflict in those regions. One of those regions was the Democratic Republic of the Congo, which pushed them into civil war, a civil war they're still fighting to get today against rebel groups such as the M23. So the DRC itself is still in conflict today. This really brings us to an end for our discussions of ethnicity. Um, we're going to discuss political geography starting after the winter break. If you have any questions, remember, bring them to class. Be happy to answer them. Have a good evening.